Hello strangers, it's October 25th, 2018, and today I'm telling you a Halloween story. Cock Lane is a small road located near St Paul's Cathedral in London. The name Cock Lane doesn't come from pheasantry as one might suspect, cockerels and hens, The name actually originates from a bizarre law in medieval England that meant that prostitution was only legal on this street throughout the whole of the city. Needless to say, Cock Lane was a very busy street. Our story begins in 1762, during the Victorian period. The street gained infamy due to a mysterious haunting that enthralled all of England. The story begins with Mr. William Kent forming a relationship with his deceased wife's sister, Fanny Lynns, who I will be referring to as Fanny throughout. Mr. Kent and Fanny found lodgings in Cock Lane with a landlord called Mr. Parsons and his daughter, Elizabeth Parsons, aged 11. Shortly after making Mr. Kent the sole benefactor of her will, Fanny died in questionable circumstances. After an argument about a loan, Mr Kent left the property on Cock Lane, but soon after his departure, strange knocking and scratching sounds were heard from his old room. Elizabeth Parsons began to suffer fits, which she claimed was caused by the ghost of Fanny that possessed her body. Upon awaking from one such fit, she claimed that Fanny's ghost had told her she had been poisoned, and the only way to save her soul was to bring justice down upon her murderer, Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons, Elizabeth's father, was forced into hiding, and Mr. Kent returned to Cock Lane and began to charge tours of his old room to the general public so they could witness Fanny's ghost first hand. This attracted Victorian celebrities of the time, including Prince Edward, Duke of York. The Victorian public were enthralled by the story and there was an interest in the afterlife and paranormal around this time period. Later, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle will conduct investigations into fairies and the occult. Number 50, Berkeley Square, the most haunted house in England, was at the height of its paranormal activity. There were, however, there were some sceptics of the story, so Mr Kent invited them to a seance, where they could communicate with Fanny's ghost directly. The group would ask the ghost a question, and the ghost would reply by knocking once for yes, or twice for no. Using this method, Fanny was able to confirm Elizabeth's story that she had been murdered. A few days later, Mr. Parsons was recognised in public, hunted down, and murdered by the Victorian mob. The media had been following the story intently and released the following infamous headline The Itching Fanny of Cock Lane. Best headline ever. Now, if you're thinking something's a bit odd here, you are completely right. It's a very famous ghost story, and obviously, it is all a hoax. So eventually, the Earl of Dartmouth began his own investigation into Fanny and the ghost. He invited several critics around the Cock Lane, knocked on Mr. Kent's door, and demanded he perform a seance for them immediately. Elizabeth, who I'd like to point out, is 11 years old placed into her bed next to the men and the group tried to address the ghost. So poor Elizabeth who is 11 years old is laying in bed all these strange men in her room trying to contact ghosts. The poor girl must have been terrified. The group were unable to contact Fanny. They took Mr Kent downstairs and they demanded he admit his guilt in the crime. Mr Kent refused and no sooner had the words left his lips than the haunting began again. Knocking and scratching sounds reverberated around the house. The group soon found the ghost. Little Elizabeth Parson had been using a block of wood to knock against the ceiling, floor and walls, creating the ghost. Mr Kent had poisoned Fanny, as he'd poisoned his previous wife, Fanny's sister. He's also indirectly responsible for the murder of Mr Parsons. Now, there's no clear evidence if, if Elizabeth was forced into assisting Mr. Kent with his fortunate act or if she did so willingly. One account read that she was bullied into it by Mr. Park, by um, Mr. Kent. 
Another account read that she was simply getting her own back on her father by pretending to be ill and pretending to have fits. And Mr. Kent saw an opportunity and just rolled with it. And Elizabeth found a lie so big she couldn't back out of it. Either way, Elizabeth had no punishment as she was under the age of being an adult. Uh, Mr. Kent, however, was imprisoned. But the story doesn't end there. Mr. Kent was treated very well in prison by his inmates, who treated him as a celebrity. He was released after two years. The house was knocked down in 1970s, but the story lives on, and some say you can still hear the knocking on Cock Lane. Though to be fair, it's probably still the prostitutes there, but hey, there you go. So strangers, hope you enjoyed this rather bizarre horror story. I know I love writing about it. Um, I first came across the story on a website post that will be linked below. Um, enjoy!